Meko es Taho. Tahoe? Taho? You really have to start wondering what's going on on this Apple product marketing team's meetings. It seems like they are running out of scenic spots. We've already done mountains. We did deserts. And now it's Mekoes Lake Tahoe. Apple product names are starting to really sound less like an operating system and more like a vacation destination or maybe a food menu. So next year we can get ready for something like Mekoes Cancun or Mekoes Quinoa Bowl. But don't worry, you are in a good company here and I will not be complaining about the name. I really love the new software update. And at least it's a memorable name. And at the end of the day, we will anyway start calling it the new macOS and hope nobody notices that. The new macOS introduces the stunning liquid glass look across all of their devices. And that's one of the biggest changes in many years. I would say since macOS Big Sur, which was already released in 2020. That was first time the Mac got a little bit more transparent and modern and now we are adding more depth into it. Now also the dock, sidebars and toolbars have a glassy reflective look that takes the inspiration from Vision OS and iOS 26. These elements have been redesigned blending into the background so your content can stand out. I will compare this old design to the new one in one of the future videos. But to finish now with all of the elements on the Mac screen, let's have a look at the menu bar, because that has also become fully transparent. It blends right into your wallpaper, which is making your display feel larger and less cluttered. You still have all the same functions, but the interface gets out of the way. Personalizing is a huge thing for macOS users. And one of the biggest news is the option to change the folder colors. But not just the colors, you can add symbols or emojis and choose from the new light, dark or even clear icon styles. Yes, you can customize the icons and folders on this system already. I have made a whole video about it, which will probably pop up now in the corner, so you can have a look at it. But I like how it's now all done automatically and it blends with the style of your screen. Connected to it, it's the fully revamped control center. It's cleaner, more customizable, and you get to decide which controls show up and how they are arranged. Before, you could only add few icons and you couldn't really change anything on the default set. You couldn't even rearrange these parts of it. Now you can fully adjust the control center, make it to be more personal and maybe more efficient to your own workflow. But now let's move on to, I think, the most exciting news about new macOS. And that are the changes to the spotlight. I use it every day to search for things, but you can do a lot more with that. You can also use it to perform hundreds of actions, like sending emails or creating notes. You can do it right from the spotlight. Because spotlight uses Apple intelligence, it can suggest actions and content which is based on your personal routines or maybe on what you are currently working on. Related to Spotlight are quick keys, allowing you to perform tasks instantly using simple two-letter keyboard shortcuts, like typing SM to send a message or AR to add a reminder. So without opening any apps, you can do a lot right from the Spotlight. And you can of course create your own shortcuts, your own quick keys to speed up your own personal workflow even more. Next one I want to mention is the phone app. Once Apple announced the new phone app coming to the Mac, I had to quickly go to the launchpad and search for the icon. Because I couldn't believe that the phone app has not been on the Mac yet. I just mistaken the icon with the FaceTime icon. So don't make the same mistake as I did. Because there is finally a full featured phone app on Mac with recent calls, voicemails, call screening and more. So again, it's using the continuity features and getting the devices closer together. Moving on to the most used app on the Mac, Safari. It also gets a fresh look with floating tabs, a new sidebar and improved privacy. Plus it's faster and more battery friendly than ever. 
Apple is claiming that it's loading pages 50% faster than Chrome and it's more battery saving, so it offers extra 4 hours of battery life. I'll compare it to other browsers soon, once I get the beta installed. But let's finish this video with Apple intelligent features. In new macOS, we also get new features. Real-time live translations in messages, FaceTime or phone. Also smarter action-based spotlight search, which I mentioned before. AI-powered shortcuts and reminders, which can now automate and organize tasks. And at last, upgraded Genmoji and Image Playground for generating new images. I'm keeping the Apple Intelligence features at the end on purpose. Because despite the great marketing from Apple, it didn't really have such an impact on user experience, which I have mentioned in one of my previous videos. I believe that most of the people still prefer to keep 20GB of storage than using these Apple Intelligence features. But let's see what these new changes will bring. And if you want to see all of these new features in action and learn how to get the most out of them, then I recommend you to subscribe to the channel because I'll be making detailed videos on all of the features. So I hope you are the same excited about it as I am and I'll see you in the next video.